Have you ever been in a situation where your dog acted out at like the perfectly wrong moment? If that's been you, then check out this video. We're gonna show you how to work through some of those issues. So today we're gonna to talk about pillars four, five, and six. Had to think about my fingers there for just a second. And we're gonna go over training under realistic stress, mastering yourself, and you are responsible. But if this video is of interest to you, if you think you're gonna enjoy it, please comment below, type obedience. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the video and also uh, tell me what other topics you want covered and we will try and make videos for those. All right, so let's jump into it. Most of the problems that people have with their dogs, at least the big problems, happen under stress, right? So it might be um, one of your friends comes over with their dog, your dog's not been around their dog before, you're stressed out, they're stressed out, the two dogs are looking at the two stressed out handlers and they get in a fight, right? And you go, oh no, they got in a fight. It's because everybody was under stress. So one of the things I highly encourage is that we train under realistic stress. That is going to vary depending on what you do with your dog, your interests, all those sorts of things. But if you want your dog to interact with other dogs in a way that's pleasant, that works together, that your friends can come over and bring their dogs, or you guys can go on walks together with your dogs and you don't have to constantly worry about them fighting, then you should be training with the dogs together and other dogs as well under a some level of stress right up on tables using beams using various different obstacles we cover a lot of those things in canine academy online and we do that all the time out here on our field so if you need help with that check out canineacademyonline.com or visit our facebook and instagram channels at canine academy online so stress inoculation training what is it so this is kind of the crux of training under real stress Every person, every animal, every living creature has a certain stress threshold where they shut down and they essentially shift from the willingness to endure the stress and, and master it to run away, right? And so it, it's somewhat connected to the fight or flight mechanism, but if you put a, a dog or a person in a certain level of stress, sometimes they just look at it and they go, I ain't doing that, right? That, their stress level, their um, ability to deal with stress is very low. Other people, at least in that area, and there's all kinds of areas where this would apply, right? So maybe uh, so one person is really, really comfortable in public speaking because they're a teacher, but if you ask them to step up onto a platform two feet off the ground, they're like, nope, scared of heights, not doing it, right? So over in the two feet off the ground realm, very low ability to handle stress. In the speaking in public realm, very high ability. And you could have somebody who's the opposite. They'll like run across a, a high wire between two, uh, you know, high rise buildings, but they don't want to talk to a crowd of three people. It freaks them out. And uh, so we all have these areas where we can deal with a lot of stress on one hand and then not much on the other. When you're working with your dogs, you want to find those stress points and then we push right up to them and then we back off. We push right up to them and we back off. And we do that five or six times. Then we usually give the dog a quick break, let them do something else for a few minutes. And then when you come back, you'll notice that they're able to push past their previous stress threshold because they've gone almost to it multiple times and they've realized, oh, I can do that, that's okay. Right, and you can use this for yourself. You can use it in almost any area you're training the dogs in. Uh, it applies to endurance, it applies to strength, it applies to agility, it applies to obedience. It applies in all of these different areas and, um, and that is essentially the foundation of how we use pillar number four in our dog training. Then we get into master yourself. Now we talked about this uh, in the very first video, how this is kind of encompassing all the, th the first four pillars into one, but it's going deeper. So plutz, good plutz. So basically, here's how it works. You can lie to other people. You might even be able to lie to yourself, but you cannot lie to the dog, right? So uh, an example would be, you're really stressed out. So let's say it's the first time you're moving with your dog in public, your dog is a decent size, and if it bites somebody, it could cause some pretty serious injuries and you're just stressed about it, right? You can pretend that you're not stressed to the people around you and they might go, oh look, that person's okay, but their dog's like all freaking out. 
You might even be able to convince yourself, no, I'm good, I'm like totally confident here, I'm moving through public with my dog, no issues. But if you are stressed out, especially if you're like close to your stress threshold, the dog knows it and the dog is going to respond accordingly. So essentially, at least in this example, the dog's going, what has my person so stressed? They're not normally stressed like this. There must be something out here causing them to be stressed. So I'm going to look for it. And then that's when a potential errant bite happens because they're trying to protect their handler, right? And now they may not bite anybody. There might be other things that they do, maybe just moving all over the place looking for things. But those are the times that you run into issues. You must learn to master yourself. So using our stress inoculation concept that we just talked about under pillar number four, how would you master yourself in that situation moving in public? Well, the first thing I would recommend is find some place that's still in public, but that has a, a low number of people, right? A low population. So maybe going to Tractor Supply Company at like nine o'clock in the morning when there's hardly anybody there, is a good time to go. There's maybe three or four other people in the whole store. You can move around, you can kind of get close to people, and then you can turn and go somewhere where there's nobody there, right? And so using that, you start getting comfortable moving with the dog in public. You get comfortable with the dog seeing people. You get comfortable with how the dog reacts when you walk past aisles, because typically when you're walking past end caps, every time the dog sees the next aisle, they just have this tendency to want to turn and go down it, right? Even if you're walking down a straight section, there's all of a sudden this aisle opens up to the side, they look, they go, oh, there's an aisle, and they turn. And, and so initially, you're going to have to work with your dog to get them over that natural tendency to want to go down those aisles. These are just examples, but start off where it's low stress, not a lot of people, and then build and build and build and build and build until you're doing something like walking through a busy airport to get on a plane, right? You don't want walking through a busy airport, getting on a plane with your dog to be the first time you've dealt with that kind of stress, if at all possible. So master yourself, use stress inoculation to bring yourself into the different areas that you're going. The other aspect of master yourself is something we talked about in the last video, which is do not get angry with the dog and you must master your fears with the dog. So that there's two separate things, we'll address them real quickly. The anger aspect we talked a little bit about in the last video where maybe you're trying to teach your dog to jump up on something, plutz. Or maybe you've told your dog to plutz and they keep sitting, good plutz. And you're having to, to use a lot of force maybe, a lot of energy to get the dog up there. They're resisting, they're fighting, whatever the case may be. You finally get them to do what they're supposed to do and then you're, now you're mad, you're angry, right? Maybe you're doing a down stay and the dog just keeps breaking before they're supposed to, right? They, they just keep getting up and running, they won't wait. And you put them back and you put them back and you put them back and you start getting frustrated and then they come, they finally wait and they come when you call them and you don't praise them. You have to control that internal anger and just let it all go. The dogs are not trying to make you angry. They're not trying to make you upset. They're not trying to hurt your feelings. They're just being dogs. So that helps a lot. And a lot of times if it's a down stay exercise, the reason they keep running to you is because they have a bond. They want to be close to you. They don't want to be separated. They need that discipline to be able to do that. But the reason they keep breaking, relax, is because they want to be close to you. So understand, I understand why they're breaking obedience. They're not, this is not acceptable. They still have to wait, but it's because they want to be close to me. So don't be upset with them. The other part is fear. So if you're afraid your dog's going to bite somebody or something, right, then you need to work your stress inoculation exercises up with that dog so that you can have confidence in that dog. So when I move with my dog through public, I move with my dog and we're coming up on some other dog out in public. Don't you love it when your cell phone makes noise? So when I'm moving with my dog in public, when I'm uh, walking up and I'm approaching another dog maybe in public, let's say we're in an airport or a busy store, right, if I tell my dog leave it, I tell them leave it and I expect them to leave it. I have confidence that they are going to leave it. And because I have confidence that they're going to leave it, I'm not afraid that they're not going to leave it. Now I might be ready to correct should they fail me, but I am going to trust that dog to do what I told them to do. I said leave it. 
A good, another good example is if I'm going to tell my dog to wait, let's give it a, a test here. Hopefully my dogs don't fail me, right? So if I tell my dogs to wait, I go, wait, this is my hand and arm signal for wait to my dogs. So I will put my hand kind of just on their snout, right at their eyes, I'll say wait, and I walk away. I don't keep turning, I don't keep telling them wait, 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 over and over again. I just say wait, and I walk away. I come back, they stay in their place. If you keep checking, you keep saying wait, 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 as you're moving away, what you're communicating to your dog is I don't trust you. I think you're going to break obedience. Maybe they will break obedience. If they do, you correct, you put them back. But you have to get these internal angers and fears under control so that you, because what happens otherwise is you drive them out and you create more issues, right? If you're afraid they're going to bite a dog, and you go, leave it, you get tense because you're afraid. You create tension in the lead. The dog senses that tension and says, something's wrong. My person's tense. I bet it's that dog over there. Rawr, they lunge out, right? Now, not all dogs will do that, but when you have those issues, typically that's what's happening. The handler is inadvertently communicating to their dog. They're really, really stressed out. And they're afraid something's going to happen and it creates the issue because we react in a way that causes the dog to act exactly the opposite of what we want. So mastering our internal anger, mastering our internal fears, and stop lying to ourselves. Train ourselves to function under stress so that we can operate in a way that is calm and confident. So, so far, if you like this video, please click like below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell at the, right next to the subscribe button so that you can get notifications of all of our weekly training videos coming up. And please share this video with friends or somebody that you think would uh, learn from it, would benefit from it. So let's get into the last one, number six, you are responsible. This is really, really important. People often, it's our natural tendencies, all of us want to do it. We want to cast the blame off onto something else. It's the dog's fault, it's that person's fault, it's that dog's fault. It's not my fault that X, Y, or Z happened. Yes, it is. So if you take a dog and your dog bites somebody, you are responsible. If your dog lunges or jumps on somebody, you are responsible. If you fail to communicate something to the dog properly and they act out, phooey it plucks. You are responsible. You must accept responsibility for where you are. You must recognize where you are so that you can plot a course to get you to where you wanna be. And if you pretend you're somewhere you're not, when you plot your course, it will be the course that takes you somewhere you don't wanna go. So you have to recognize where you are first so that then when you plot your course, it actually takes you to where you wanna go. Here is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. People will, I, I have a lot of clients that come and train with me because their dogs were aggressive in some form. They bit another dog, they bit a child, they lunged out at a person, something like that. They were aggressive and they say, I hear it almost every time we have these conversations, the first thing they say is, it came out of nowhere, right? It was totally unexpected. We don't know where it came from. Oh my goodness, there was no warning. These are the sorts of things that I'll hear, right? Dogs don't bite without giving warning. Dogs don't lunge out without telling you they're going to do it. They don't go after other dogs without indicating well in advance that that's what they're getting ready to do. The problem is most people allow the communication from the dog and do nothing about it for so long that that becomes normal. The dog reacts in a way that's saying, I'm gonna bite that, I'm gonna bite that, but they don't bite it and the person just accepts whatever that communication is as, oh, well, this is just how they act. And then when they bite something several weeks down the road, they say, it came out of nowhere. The dog had been communicating for weeks or months in advance. I'm gonna bite that. I don't like it. I'm gonna bite it. So we have to understand our dog's communication, how to be uh, properly communicate with them back, how to be uh, disciplined enough to expect obedience, how do we properly correct, how do we properly communicate, how do we properly praise, how do we read the dog's body language. These are the responsibilities of dog owners because dogs are predators. Predators use their teeth and their claws to communicate. 
right? And so we must understand their communication back to us so that we can communicate to them what our expectations are. And then we use discipline, obedience, control to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do so that the people around us, the other dogs around us, don't get hurt. But it's very important that we recognize we are responsible because if we are responsible, we can fix it. If we're not responsible, then that means the dog is unfixable, we should just go put them down. But 99% of the time, that's not necessary. If you will do what's necessary as the handler and take responsibility over the dog, we can fix the problems that the dogs have, we can get the obedience and the control we need, we can live happy lives with our dogs. So if you have liked this content, if you would enjoy more content like it, please follow us over on our other platforms. On Facebook, we are at Fortress Canine Dogs for the part of our company that sells trained dogs, and we are at Canine Academy Online for the dog training portion. On Instagram, we are at Fortress Canine and at Canine Academy Online. We would love to meet you over there. I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, questions in the comments below. And if there are other topics you'd love us to cover, please let me know and we will try and make a video just for you.